Good morning. How many of you have ever had a, a problem deploying a database change or an application? Anyone? A couple of hands. You know, I've been in software for 20 years, developing software and being a product manager and working with databases. And still, when it comes to the point of making a big change, deploying a big application, I get butterflies in the pit of my stomach. So it's kind of a scary environment for uh, deploying software, making database changes. So to break the ice, we're going to play a game. And the game illustrates the complexity of deploying software and deploying database changes. We call it the deployment game. So you guys right up front, you're the VIP, so you management. But the kind of row at the, at, at the back there, the first row of chairs, you are the development team. So you're the development environment. And the people right at the back are production. And we've got some white balloons, and the white balloons are application changes. And the red balloons are database changes. So what we're going to do is we're going to simulate a deployment. And what you're going to do is take those database and application changes and pass them back over your head from dev to test to staging to production. OK? You ready? But to make, it, to make it kind of a bit more realistic, we're going to pretend that your databases aren't in source control. So you need to close your eyes. OK? <laughs> And then, of course, with every deployment, there's time pressure. So we need to try and get it to the back there into production in 30 seconds. Are you ready? OK, let's go. Are you ready? Take those. Don't let the air out. Come on. Grab, grab it here. Grab it there. Come on. Come on. You guys are slow. Grab it. Come on. Go. Go. Oh, man. I'm much too fast what happened? to take that test. Come on. Okay, so we got one or two changes back to that design. A couple of them got lost. Um, you know what the game shows, but what we all know is that delivering software, making these database changes is really, really hard. This here is a, a graph showing how many mistakes we've made uh, on the Redgate website uh, each quarter. And you can see the graph trending up as we start deploying and making changes to our website more frequently. So obviously we're trying to fix this at the moment, but the reality is that delivering software, making database changes is really, really hard. And it's hard for four reasons. The first thing is that when you deliver that software, quite often it doesn't do what people want it to do. So there's some scary statistics about the fact that 50% of the software that we develop and deliver is not what the customer wanted. It's really hard to get that customer delivered on time. So how many projects are you aware of where people say, you know, hey, we, we're delivering on time, we're ahead of schedule, relax, everything's cool. That's not the norm. The norm is we're a couple of weeks late or a couple of months late. It's quite difficult to deploy database changes or software without breaking something. So often, as we make that change, things break. That's kind of embarrassing. And then it takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of energy to move those changes from dev to test to staging to production. But the strange thing is that even though it's really difficult to deliver software, people are trying to deliver it more and more frequently. And why? Well, the one thing, of course, is that the software development process has these inventory collection points. So if you look at Redgate, for example, we've got a bunch of software that's been developed, but it hasn't been tested. And we've got a lot of software that's been tested, but we haven't yet shipped to the customer. And clearly, that's a waste, because we put all the effort into developing the software, but we haven't quite got it out to our end users who get benefit of that software. But there are a couple of other really good reasons why people try and deliver uh, more and more frequently. And the first, of course, is that if you deliver frequently, you can deliver small chunks of software, small chunks of functionality. And because you're making small changes, obviously the impact of those changes is somewhat smaller. So if there's a problem, you can fix the problem, or you can roll back that deployment. So you can kind of ride through that change. You don't have these massive outages as a result of massive change to your system. Of course, because you're delivering frequently as well, you're getting frequent feedback from your customers. So if you got it wrong, if you made the wrong thing, you know, they can tell you. Or if their requirements change, you could be more responsive. So if you're delivering once a year, 
it's quite difficult to, in fact, respond to a customer saying, hey, I really need this. But if you're delivering once a week, you can kind of squeeze the new feature or the new function or the new database change um, into a, you know, a release in, in a week or two. Um, the strange thing about this as well is that development teams uh, and DBAs actually love deploying more frequently. And you might say, why? But the, the thing is that because they're deploying more frequently, they're getting feedback from their customers. So they're not working in this ivory tower. They've got this ability to really understand what their customers want, and that's great. So they feel much more connected, much more empowered, much more part of the real world. And then, of course, as you deliver more frequently, you get better at it. So you start eliminating those bottlenecks, you start automating the process, and as a result, this massive effort to get the software and the database changes from dev to production um, becomes more and more easy. So at Redgate, we really think that this, this trend towards delivering more frequently, uh, deploying database changes more frequently is just the beginning. You know, I was at a talk recently, and I heard that Amazon uh, make changes to their production website about every 11 seconds, which is pretty scary. So that kind of constant, continuous deployment. Um, and Redgate's been in the business of helping people with database delivery for a long time. Can anyone here, does, was anyone here using uh, SQL Compare uh, version 1? Okay, a couple of hands. And that was more than 10 years ago. And SQL Compare version 1 was simply a tool that allowed you to compare two databases and see the differences between those two databases. That was great because if you had a test environment and a dev environment, you could look at the differences and make the test one the same as the dev one. And then shortly thereafter, we realized that in fact we could generate scripts, SQL scripts, to make the one database the same as the other. So we had this kind of compare and sync capability. And we realized that people want to in fact have the data the same in both environments. So we developed a tool called Data Compare, which allowed you to make the data in your dev environment the same as your test or the same as production. And over time, we introduced a bunch of other products, Dependency Tracker and SQL Doc uh, and Data Generator, all aimed at really helping you manage this change, this database change, from a dev to a test to a production environment. Um, several years ago, we introduced a tool called SQL Source Control. And what SQL Source Control allows you to do is to take your schema and take your stored procedures and put them into your source control system. So if you're using Subversion or you're using Git or using Mercurial, you can in fact put your database into that source control system. And that's great because what that means is you can now do all the things that you can with your code with your databases. So you can start doing version control and you can track changes and you can roll back changes and suddenly the database becomes the same as your application. So it's no longer a second class citizen. It's a, it's a real piece of code that you can treat as code in your development environment. Um, One of the things, though, of course, about deploying databases is often the applications that sit on top of those databases. So what you want to be able to do is to deploy an application at the same time as you deploy that database. So they kind of remain coupled. And what you'd also like to do, in fact, is have some kind of a user interface to be able to track all of your, your deployments and see all those deployments across your whole dev and test and production environment. So the most recent product we've, we've uh, uh, introduced into this whole delivery story uh, is a product called Deployment Manager. Um, and here to talk about Deployment Manager is the product manager for Deployment Manager, Justin Caldicott. And Justin's going to give us a bit of a demo um, on Deployment Manager. Thanks, John. Can you hear me OK? Great. Um, so I'd like to start by talking a little bit about the feedback that we were hearing from you about what the specific problems of deployment were. So often we'd hear that it was very time consuming to do deployments. There'd be lots of different steps, the whole process. Sometimes I spoke to some, some guys working with Oracle databases at Azure 2012, they mentioned that it actually took them about a month to do the whole deployment process. So it can be very long, it, there's a lot of steps. If something goes wrong in any one of those steps, then you know it gets a bit stressful. And you have to often come in out of hours. Maybe there's one person that understands that specific system, that specific database that you need to deploy. And obviously, if that guy's not here or leaves the company, then that's going to create problems. So you want to solve that problem as well. And the final problem that we're hearing is that it's opaque. So we, we see a lot of times, and we did this in our own DevOps team 
initially. We, we had this whiteboard where we scrolled all the different version numbers that we deployed. You know, this customer has this version, this customer has this version, and then someone would like, wipe it out, you know, don't need that. We don't know what, who's got what now, you know, so you need a consistent way of actually seeing what software you have in which environments. So I'd like to introduce the new Deployment Manager tool. Uh, we introduced this probably about nine months ago to a year ago now. We've just released version two on Monday. There's actually a, a free version of this on the website for you to get started with. Um, it works, it's a release management tool. So you can see from this view of the dashboard that we've got multiple environments defined here. So we've got dev, test, staging, and production in this case. And we've got multiple projects. So in this case, we've got our web user interface, web service, CRM, and we've got the database there as well. So it lets us model this process and track the changes and actually deploy the different versions between those environments. And it's not just for the database, it's, it's worth mentioning as well, this is for the whole of the application. So your websites, Windows services, they all go together. Uh, we call that total deployment. How does it work? So there is a server, so you install the release manager on a server, either on your network or you can put this in the cloud. And then you install a lightweight agent onto each of the machines that you want to control or deploy to. And then you publish your website, your database as packages to Deployment Manager. And from there, you can deploy out to each of the environments. But the really nice thing about that is that it gives you that repeatability. It's that same package that you, you can deploy to dev, to test, to staging, production. So you get that consistency between them. Does anyone visit or get the Simple Talk newsletter? That's a good number. So uh, this, I'm going to use this for my demo. So we've got a, it's a great example for the demo because it's got an ASP.NET web app and it's got a SQL Server database behind. So we'll have a quick look. So this is the a live instance of Deployment Manager. You can see I've got essentially exactly the same setup as in the previous slide. And what I'm going to do is I can see here this is the current version of Simple Talk that's in production. Um, it's worth noting that these custom RSS feeds are actually based on uh, static data or reference lookup data that's in the database. I'm going to be changing some of those just now. So we have a new version in staging, 1.88. I'm going to take this and I'm going to deploy this version. The VM is just warming up. Come on, VM. There we go. Um, and then we can deploy this version to the production environment. And so this is making use of those packages that we've already published to Deployment Manager. And it's going through the process. Obviously, the agent in this example is on this machine, but they could very easily be on remote servers. Um, the technology that it's using, it's deploying the database you can see and the web application. The technology that it's using for the database, it's just the same SQL compare engine technology to do the deployment. You see it's finished. Let's have a look at the latest changes. Just refresh our production. Let's see what we get. And it looks like John theron has been making some changes. And you can see he's also added, obviously, the website change. But you can see also here, as I mentioned, this is just static data. So we can deploy not just the schema for the database, but any reference or lookup data that you might have as well. Now obviously I can't leave this in production. I've got to take this back now. So I'm going to find the previous release that I had here. And I'm going to select it. And I'm going to deploy it back to the production environment. And exactly the same process is happening. It's using the previous versions of the packages that we created, and it's publishing those back to the website. So rollback um, of any changes becomes really easy as well. And uh, we have a, a session later today. So Grant Fritchie and myself will be talking uh, at 11.45 on best practices for database deployment. And if I just refresh production, then you can see that we are back as we were. Everything, the database changes, the web changes are all back. So, yes, yeah, so that's the brief demo. Um, 
We have, as I mentioned, there's a free, tri uh, a free version of the software on the website, so you can get started with that. Um, and we have the session later at 11.45. We also have all of the, um, the machines out in the foyer have all got a copy of Deployment Manager installed. So come and ask for a demo uh, if you want to learn more about it. All right, thanks, that's Deployment Manager. Cheers. John? Thanks. So I guess my 10 minutes of fame on Simple Talker are over. Um, we live in a world these days where people expect to have insight into anything that they want to have insight into. So whenever anything happens, you kind of expect you can find out all about it um, immediately. So for example, if we wanted to understand what we could do in London tonight, we could go and Google. If we wanted to know what our friends are doing, we can go and look at Twitter, we can go and look at Facebook. So we've got this expectation that we can find the data we need. Now this here is a, a Google Analytics graph and it shows the number of visitors to the SQL in the City website. So when we were preparing for this event, we said, well, how many people are going to come? It's a great number, by the way. Um, but I kind of expected to be able to find that data. And I'd have been surprised if I couldn't find that data on Google Analytics. Um, but the reality actually is that when we think about code and databases, it's quite difficult to get that understanding of what our code is doing and what our databases are doing in production. How many of you have ever had the kind of experience of getting your customer tell you that you've got a problem with your software or your database? Anyone? Quite a few. And how many of you have got told by your boss you know, that things aren't working? Again, quite a few. So really, it would, be, it would be great, it would be much nicer if we could actually get better insight, better understanding about our databases and our applications um, before customers and bosses and people like those kind of guys told us about what was happening. Um, so one of the things we try and do at Redgate is really provide some of those applications and tools to give you better insight into your databases and applications. And one of the things we believe is that, in fact, the best time to get insight is as soon as possible. So if you can get some kind of understanding in dev or in test, get that understanding there. But of course, some problems only manifest themselves in production. So often you've got to actually look in production as well to understand what's happening um, with your database or with your application. Um, the first tool we've got that kind of works in this insight type space is a tool called Ads Performance Profiler. And what Ads Performance Profiler does is it takes a look at your .NET code and it tells you which lines of that .NET code are taking the longest. So you can really understand what your application is doing and where the bottlenecks are. And you can start addressing those bottlenecks. Uh, along with Ants Performance Profiler, there's a tool called Ants Memory Profiler. And that allows you to see how your application is using memory and to troubleshoot memory problems with your .NET application. There's a tool called Reflector that a lot of .NET developers know that allows you to look at third-party .NET code um, and in fact, most recently, um, we've we started supporting um, an open source tool called Glimpse. And what Glimpse allows you to do, in fact, is get some kind of a view of your server from your browser. So you can really understand in a web type application what your server is doing. Um, on Ant's performance profiler, how many of you have had the problem of kind of trying to decide whether the performance problem was in the database or in the application? It's a real tricky thing, you know. The database guys are saying, you know, that's the, that's the code that's going wrong. And, the, and the, the application developers are saying, no, no, it's all in the database. And you kind of get this finger pointing and no one actually knows what to do. So one of the things we've done with Ant's Performance Profiler is allow you to look at both the database calls and the code in the same type of environment. So you can see, in fact, what's taking the longest. You can see how long the database calls are taking. You can see how long the code is taking to execute. And that stops the finger pointing and it allows you to really kind of understand and get going on troubleshooting the problem. So that ability to kind of see what's happening across the stack um, is really, really important. Um, to talk a bit more about Glimpse, um, I'm going to just uh, show a quick video um, uh, by two guys, uh, Anthony van der Hoorn and Nick Molnar, and they're in fact are the inventors or the, the founders of Glimpse, and they're going to tell you a bit about this uh, Glimpse um, application. So let me try and get this thing running. Glimpse is the diagnostics platform for the web. It's a package that you drop into your solution. You'll get insights into how your application is running for each request that you run on your application. It was born out of the idea that there had to be a better way of kind of understanding what was going on uh, inside the pipeline 
uh, of web applications, and it really resonated with people. Scott Hanselman had walked into the room, and, and he had his, you know, his groupies and his entourage all around him, and Phil said, he needs to see this. And so he, he kind of cuts the crowd and grabs Scott and brings Scott over to our laptop and says, look at this. And within five seconds, we clicked, we clicked the glimpse icon, and the glimpse panel popped up, and Scott says, oh my gosh, you need to be on the podcast. One of the biggest defining moments for us of late was that uh, we got sponsorship uh, from Redgate to continue doing uh, Glimpse uh, development full time. Just the ability to maintain an open source project can be uh, quite time consuming. And so the sponsorship allows us to really devote all of our energy and effort into Glimpse. And where it is today is nowhere close to where we hope it'll be a year from now. So the future of Glimpse is promising. We're looking to support many more frameworks and many more platforms as we move forward. Mm -hmm. Particularly of interest to us is a heads-up display. We realized that we have all this cool information at our disposal. We've probably got like over a thousand different data points that we gather. So we've isolated those, we've been able to surface them, figure out what you want in what context and present that to you. So what we're building is a dashboard we're building a heads-up display that will constantly give you just the feedback that you need and tell you when something is going wrong without you having to actively maintain it. So it'll be the oil gauge, it'll be the gas gauge, it'll be your odometer. So please go off, download Glimpse. Uh, you can find it on NuGet or getglimpse.com. You'll find your way there and uh, try it out. And as we said, please contribute. If you see something that you'd like to change or want to have a, a voice in this, let us know. Get in contact with us. But in the meantime, enjoy. Okay, how do I advance the slide? There we go. Okay, so that was Nick and Anthony. They're cool .NET dudes. Um, but they, you know, they're kind of part of this open source community and they're doing some, some good stuff in terms of really helping people understand what's happening with their ASP.NET applications and in fact with other applications. Um, on the SQL Server side of things, um, a lot of you know a SQL Monitor. Um, and SQL monitors our product to really help you understand what's happening in your SQL servers wherever you are. Um, and one of the things we're doing with SQL monitor right now is we're kind of focusing on how to help people diagnose uh, performance problems. Uh, so performance problems are kind of interesting because you can get swamped with information. And you can have way too much information to in fact make any kind of diagnosis. So we've got a panel of MVPs, our clever guys, are helping us really decide what should be inside of the application and what should be alongside the application on a site like SQL Server Central to kind of provide context for those decisions. So if, for example, take wait stats. You might want a bit of information about those wait stats right inside of the application, but you might want a bunch of other content, deeper kind of content in SQL Server Central to help you make a decision. And the other thing we're thinking about is how do we involve the community? How could we get experts in the community to help you diagnose your performance problems via perhaps that SQL Server Central community? Um, the other thing we're doing with, uh, with Monitor is we've introduced uh, recently a couple of betas and we'll be doing um, another beta quite soon of a, monitor, of a hosted version of SQL Monitor. So right now, uh, when you use SQL Monitor, you've got to go and install the monitoring application on your site um, and you can start monitoring. But with a hosted version, all you'll need to do, in fact, is install a relay. And that relay will collect information from your various data or SQL servers and ship that data up into the cloud. And you can simply browse to the web portal and start monitoring your SQL servers. So you can then get emails and alerts when things go wrong. You can look at the real-time information on SQL Server. You can look at your history of performance with those SQL servers. And there's no kind of hassle in terms of configuration and setup and managing of that monitoring application. Um, so the great thing, of course, then is you can get on with your day. You can do the normal stuff you do as a DBA. And SQL Monitor will be kind of keeping an eye um, on your SQL servers. A number of you are involved much more in protecting the data, in worrying about making sure that your data is protected, and worrying about the fact that applications and databases need to be running um, 24 by 7. 
Um, and the challenge being a DBA, of course, is that even though people are deploying more frequently, even though, even though these IT environments are becoming more and more complex, you can't afford to make a mistake. So you've in fact got to be making sure every day that your database backups are happening and you don't make a mistake, you don't fail um, on the odd day. So one of the things we do, for example, to try and help you be great every day is when we take a backup, we automatically verify that backup. So that when you need to restore that backup, you can kind of rest assured that it's been tested and you will be able to restore that backup um, properly um, and, and, and safely. Um, the other thing we do with backup is we allow people now to choose to backup to the cloud. So with traditional backup, you choose your machine and you say we're going to backup to that server or backup to tape. And now we're saying if you'd like to, for our SQL backup customers, just choose the cloud as a destination for backing up. Um, and of course then you can manage your backups in the cloud and you can restore the backup from the cloud to your site whenever you want to. And one of the customers we've got in fact using backup in the cloud is a healthcare organization. And you might think, well healthcare, that sounds kind of weird because they've got HIPAA and they've got all kinds of compliance things they need to worry about. But in fact what these guys do is they use SQL backups encryption capability, so they encrypt the data on site. And they ship the encrypted data off to the cloud but they keep the key on site. So the key never leaves site. And as a result of that, this healthcare company can in fact effectively use SQL backup hosted version or, or the cloud version um, without worrying about these compliance issues. They're quite a big application. I mean, I think they do a daily backup um, that's about 20 gigabytes of data, and they do a log backup every 15 minutes that's between 50 and 100 megabytes of data. So fairly substantial um, application there. Um, so both SQL Monitor and SQL Backup are kind of traditional applications um, that people install um, on their sites. But as you can see with both of them, what we're trying to do, in fact, is allow people to take advantage um, of the cloud. How many of you have got applications right now running in the cloud? Anyone? A couple, three or four. How many plan to do that in the next year or two? Okay. How many are never going to do it? Okay. So, you know, one of the things, and by the way, the other thing, mobile applications. How many of you have mobile applications and are trying to develop mobile applications? So a couple more. Um, so one of the things we try and do at Redgate is make those, those new technologies slightly more accessible. So help people get into the cloud, help, help people to start using um, or developing mobile applications um, without some of the angst that kind of is associated with these new things. So the first uh, set of services we've got is a, is a set of services we call Redgate's Cloud Services. And Redgate's Cloud Services really help you start managing your SQL Azure data. So your SQL, so, so the, the SQL database inside of Windows Azure uh, SQL Azure, and they allow you, this, these cloud services allow you to back up your SQL Azure data, they allow you to schedule backups for that SQL Azure data, and of course they allow you to restore that data, but you can also in fact store your backups either in uh, Azure, the Microsoft place, or in Amazon S3. So that's pretty cool, because now what you could do is you could have your SQL Server inside of Windows Azure, and you can have your backups stored in Amazon, so all of your eggs aren't in one cloud basket. Um, but the other thing you can start seeing happening is that we've got tools that can help you take your on-premise SQL Server and back it up to the cloud, and other tools that help you have stuff in the cloud that you can back up to your, um, to your, to your site. We're kind of getting into that environment where you'll be able to back up from anywhere to anywhere. Okay? So you can imagine being able to, in fact, move data from on-site to the cloud and back again in a kind of seamless manner. And you can imagine starting to have services on top of those backups, so people verifying their backups, or people managing retention policies, or people creating environments for reporting, or disaster recovery, or development and testing, all with these data services and all in the cloud. So that's a vision that we actively think is a, is a good kind of vision and we're actively pursuing it. So if you've got ideas about that, if you'd like to chat about that, we've got an interactive session uh, just next door there and our product managers and some of our developers are there to chat to you about your ideas um, of how those data services might work um, in the cloud. Just staying in the cloud, um, another set of tools we've got um, is a set of tools um, from Cerebrata. Uh, we acquired Cerebrata, I guess about 18 months ago. And these are tools to help you manage your Windows Azure environment. So you can manage your, you can manage your Windows Azure uh, storage objects, and you can start managing your applications um, inside of Windows Azure. So Halo 4, uh, all of you gamers will know about Halo 4. 
Um, my son told me all about it. Um, but really, it's, a, it's an Xbox game, runs inside of Windows Azure, and the Halo development team use Cerebrata to manage uh, that Halo 4 application. So they can deploy Halo 4 uh, to Azure. What they can also do is they can edit configurations and they can manage the Windows services or the Azure services using um, Cerebrata's um, Azure management um, pack. Um, and then for mobile, we've got this concept of a, of, a, of a tool called Nomad. And what Nomad allows you to do is to develop applications for iPhones, for Android type of, of, of environments, inside of Visual Studio. So that kind of sounds weird, but I mean, think for example, one of our customers is a company, company called Fielding Systems. And they develop software uh, for oil and gas companies. And what they want to do is they want to create an application that their people in the field can use. So when they're working on a platform, when they're working at an oil well, and they want those people to be able to use that application um, on their iPhone or on their Android phone. But they're a Windows shop, so they're used to developing inside of uh, Visual Studio. So what Nomad allows them to do is to in fact develop applications inside of Visual Studio, and they've developed a hybrid application that uses HTML5 and it uses Microsoft Sync services. And together with, my, with Nomad, they can now stay inside of Visual Studio. And they can do the design and they can do the prototyping and they can do the debugging and they can do the deployment without leaving that kind of safety of the Microsoft Visual Studio type of environment. So really I've spoken about three themes and I've tried to talk a bit about what we think those themes are, what the future holds and how we can help you with those themes. And the first was this concept of increasing uh, frequency of delivery. So people are starting to deliver th their applications, make changes to their databases, more and more frequently for a number of very good reasons. And Redgate, of course, is in the delivery business, and whether you deliver fast or slowly, uh, we've got a bunch of tools to really help you um, deliver those applications. Secondly, we spoke about insight and how difficult it is to, in fact, understand what's happening in that complex application stack of yours. And again, we've got a bunch of tools to help you get insight into those applications and those databases. And thirdly, we spoke about the fact that um, in the face of this change, in the face of this increasing complexity, it's quite difficult to manage the data. And what we're doing is providing a bunch of tools to help you manage that data in this kind of uncertain world. So we've got a great day today. We've got a, a bunch of uh, developer sessions, sessions for SQL Server developers. We've got a bunch of sessions for, for DBAs. We've also got a couple of gaps that will allow you to chat uh, to Red Gators, to chat to our MVPs, uh, Steve Jones, Grant Fitchley, um, and to really chat to each other. You know, the, the feedback we get about this event is that it's a really friendly event, people can chat, people can network. So make, take the opportunity to in fact do a bit of networking, chat to your colleagues, um, share your experiences, understand how they in fact uh, are solving their problems, and really have a great day. Thanks everyone for coming. Thank you.